Hi, good day everyone and welcome to our class. This course is about labor law. And the title of this course is Labor Law or Labor Standards Law. This is book one of the Labor Code. And I am your presenter, Lyndon A. Maseren. I am a real estate broker, a certified public accountant, have master's degree in business administration. I am a lawyer. I have a doctor of jurisprudence and I'm working on my doctorate on business administration. And we begin our topic or course with the term or the Latin term, salus populi est suprema lex. So this means that the general welfare of the people should be the supreme law. General welfare means the health, safety and security, felicity or extreme happiness, good environment and stable government should be provided to the people and laws should be made to secure every uh, classes of this welfare. So laws that are intended for general welfare are so-called social legislations. It emanates from the theory of social justice. Now examples of social legislations are Senior Citizens Act, which provides uh, benefits to senior citizens, the social security law, our healthcare laws, laws granting protection to women and children, like the VAUC, or the Magna Carta for women. Then for the sick and underprivileged, like the PWDs, or the, the poor, like the poor peace, then housing laws like Pag Ibig, and then we have the labor laws. The Test the Act of 1994, the Labor Code, the Solo Parent Act, likewise the Paternity Act, and uh, the 13th month pay, and so on and so forth. So these laws which gives health which provides safety and security and happiness to people of our country are so-called social legislations. And the laws are enacted by our legislative branch of the government and implemented by the executive branch of our government, which is under the president of the Philippines. So labor code of the Philippines is a presidential decree 442. It was enacted in sometime in November 1973 and took effect in May 1, on May 1, 1974, which is the Labor Day. This was uh, drafted by no less than a bar top nature, Mr. Attorney Blas Ople. He was former Secretary of Labor of the Philippines, under the umbrella of the uh, another bar top dancer, number one, uh, Ferdinand E. Marcos, former president of the Philippines. So they are still being implemented. So this law is uh, quite generous to labor. So main topics of labor laws are labor standards and Labor Relations. Labor Standards is book one and book two is Labor Relations. So we will discuss labor uh, book one, which is the Labor Standards. And these are the laws which sets out the minimum terms, conditions and benefits of employment that employers must provide or comply with and to which employees are entitled and this is not only as a privilege, but 
as a matter of legal right. So it is a right for all employees. So we'll discuss book one. While book two is undertaken by another course, talks about the labor relations, talks about the uh, defining the status, rights, and duties, as well as the institutional mechanisms that governs the individual and collective interactions between employers, employees, and their representatives. In sum, it talks about the, the mechanisms of employees, how to form unions, and then once a, form, a union is formed, there are systems that the union will interact with their employers to make a collective bargaining of their terms and conditions of work. So unionism is being discussed in labor too. So that's another course. So meanwhile, we'll discuss book one, which is labor standards law. So public policies of the states, of the state, which is the Republic of the Philippines, are declared under the labor code. So in every law, there are public policies that the government or the state defines and uh, declares. No? So these are the basic, basic policies of the state. Number one, that the state or the government or the Republic of the Philippines will afford protection to labor. Number two, that the Republic of the Philippines will promote full employment. So this is very clear that all Filipinos who are in a workable age, from age 21 or 18 to 65, must be given employment by the state. Now, if the, there are unemployed persons, so it's very clear under this policy that our government failed you know, under this declaration. Number two. Number three, that the Philippines or the government will ensure equal work opportunities to all people or to all Filipinos, regardless of sex, race, or creed. So sex, female, or male. So the males or the females have equal work opportunities. So there is no, that's why there are more females now who are occupying uh, higher positions than males. Uh, before, only the managers before are only males or president of corporations are only males. But because of these declarations, there are, this declaration, there are now head of companies which are females. You know? Number four, of course, race is, uh, we are under the Malay race. And there are some of us who have uh, American fathers or mothers. So they are Caucasian. And some of us are uh, Turkish or Middle Eastern race or Arabs or Muslims. The creed is about the religion. So there is no advantage to any of this. No? The law, the state will not give any advantage. So equal opportunity of work. Number four, that the government will regulate the regulations between workers and employers. And number five, assure workers' rights to self-organization, collective bargaining, security of tenure, and just and humane conditions. So number four and five are about uh, unionism and the labor standards law, which is just and humane conditions of work, security of ten tenure. These are labor standards law, while collective bargaining is about labor relations law, and self-organization, which is 
unionism. Now, under the Constitution, on the other hand, which is the basic law of our land, now we are currently using the we are using the 1987 Constitution, which was uh, ratified by the people under the term of the late President Corazon Aquino. Now there are basic rights granted by the Constitution to workers, and these are the following. The right to organize, which means the right to make union among themselves. So unionism is a basic right of all workers granted by the Constitution. So once a, a union is made, then they have the right also to conduct collective bargaining or negotiate with management. Negotiate about what? About their terms and conditions of work. You know? And we are not going, for example, like we are not going to work if we don't receive this basic salary. We are not going to work if we don't receive this number of leaves, like right? paid leaves. You know? vacation leaves rather. so those are examples another basic right granted by the constitution is the number three right to engage in peaceful concerted activities including strike of course strike cannot be undertaken without complying with the requirements provided by law so if the strike is uh or did is being undertaken and did not comply with the requirements of law, then it could be ruled as a, an illegal strike. And the officers of the union will be, can be terminated from work, and including those employees who participated in the strike. So one, two, three are labor relations law. Let's go to number four to enjoy security of tenure. So this pertains to the safe, the sec sec security of a worker of his employment that is not going to be terminated without any just or authorized cause by his employer. So meaning that the employee can sleep well because he knows that he cannot be terminated, terminated from his work without just or authorized cause. No? Number five, to work under humane conditions. Of course, you cannot, if you are a cashier, you cannot work uh, or your cash register should not be placed uh, without roof. So you should have roof or air conditioning. So that's humane condition of work. Given a seat or a table, well lighted, like that. To receive a living wage. So wage is governed under the minimum wage law. So most of us are receiving minimum wages. How much is the minimum wage here in uh, Region 7? It's 387 something. 387 pesos. Is that enough for a an individual? Probably or probably not. But if he has a family and with three kids or children, so 387 is quite small for that kind of of family. Number seven, to participate in policy and decision making processes affecting the rights and benefits as provided by law. So these uh, policies and decision making is about the rights and benefits of the employees. No? So this pertains to the formulation of the employee handbook employees uh, conditions while being hired by the company so it has nothing to do with 
uh, how to run business. Okay. So number four to number seven are the labor standards law. And this is what we are going to discuss. So the constitution and the labor code has provided rights to workers. So there are principles which are made under the labor code. The first principle is in favor of labor. And construct, construction means the interpretation of the law. So when the law is, uh, there is ambiguity or doubt, then it should be uh, here. It should be resolved in favor of labor if there is doubt. Now in the landmark case of Eastern Shipping Lines versus the POEA, or also known as the Philippine Overseas Unemployment Administration, when the court says that when the interest of labor and capital will collide, meaning the employees and the employer interest will collide, employees employer will collide. The influence of capital, meaning the influence of the employer, because the employer has money, they know uh, the senators, they know the congressman, they know the president, should be counterbalanced with the sympathy and compassion of law for the less privileged workers. So the law should be balanced, counterbalanced to those who are underprivileged or less privileged. Who are the workers? Lesser capital, less influence, less people they, they know who works on top of the government. Protecting labor, according to the Supreme Court, does not mean oppression or destruction of capital. Because if the employer is right, then the employer's act will be sustained. Meaning the, the employer is right, then he will be given justice. No? So that's the interpretation of law should be in favor of labor meaning in favor of the workers another principle which this time gives a right to management which is making uh, having discretion and judgment meaning they uh, management is free to regulate according to its own discretion and judgment all aspects of employment that is including hiring work assignments so the management or manager can give you what kind of work the working methods the time and place and manner of work the tools which should be used the procedures to be followed and how workers should be supervised the regulations of work, you know, how to work and how, where and when to transfer employees, then lay off of workers, meaning uh, legally terminating workers, and how to discipline, discipline, fire or terminate, dismiss or recall workers. So management is given the prerogative. So. This is to balance the construction of law, which is in favor of labor. So this time around, uh, management is given the right to regulate how they run the business, including how to supervise workers. So we have a question, who enforces labor, labor laws? <coughs> and whom it applies. So the labor law clearly does not apply to every worker. 
there are certain workers who are not covered under this law. So firstly, who applies the labor laws? Now, under Article 5 of the Labor Code, rules and regulations of the labor law are being implemented by the Department of Labor and Employment. Or the, they are the one enforcing the labor laws. And furthermore, they also possess the rule-making rule power in enforcing the labor code. <coughs> so <clears throat> the labor, the Department of Labor and Employment has full power as in relation to the labor law. Why, do, why did I say full power? Because there are three branches of our government. <coughs> These three branches, which are namely the legislative, which enacts laws, so the legislative, the Senate, and the con uh, it's the Congress, no? Senate and the representatives, they are the one enacting laws. And the next branch is the executive department, which is the president and the departments, includes the Department of Labor. And what's the rule of the executive department? They are the one, they are the ones implementing the uh, laws which are enacted by the legislative branch. And the third branch is the judiciary department, which is the Supreme Court and all, all the lower courts the Court of Appeals, the regional trial courts, and all other lower courts. Now this labor code, which was enacted by the president of the Philippines, who was the dictator at the time, grants or delegates the, all the powers to the Department of Labor. So this department gives out the rules and regulations in implementing the labor law and also the judicial judiciary's rule making power which is the decision making power in case of labor labor cases but the rule or regulation that exceeds the dole's doles uh, rule making authority is void so this article 5 grants the dolly a quasi judicial power meaning it is an executive and at the same time a judiciary and at the same time a legislative in one. No? It is quasi-judicial agency. It gives out the implementing rules and regulations of the law and governs the labor code, courts. They are the ones who makes the courts, the labor courts which are the regional arbitration branches headed by the labor arbiters and the National Labor Relations Commission, which is an appellate court of the RAB. This one is RAB, regional arbitration branches. So here in, in region seven, we have it in Cebu city. So the courts in, of labor cases are being manned or under the umbrella of the DOLI, the Department of Labor and Employment. It is not under the Supreme Court. Okay, let's go to applicability. To whom does the labor code apply? According to Article 6, it applies alike to all workers, except as otherwise provided by law whether agricultural or non-agricultural. So since there is an exception, there probably are a lot of workers who are not governed by the labor code. And we'll discuss that later. Will it apply to government corporation? The answer is yes, but only to government corporation incorporated under the corporation code. 
know, there are different kinds of government-owned corporations, which are also known as GOCCs. Let's say, for example, the PhilHealth SSS, the uh, PAGCOR, or the, which is the Philippine Games Amusement Board. There is also the PCSL, who is the which runs the lottery, a lotto. That's an example of government-owned controlled corporations. We have the one who runs the airport, which is the Pactan Cebu International Airport Authority. It's a GOCC. And if it is incorporated or created under the corporation code, then it is governed. Then the workers are under the labor code. If it's not, created under the corporation code, it's incorporated under its own charter or law, then it is uh, governed under the law or governed under the civil code. So if there's a question, government corporation is uh, employees of government corporation. Again, employees of government corporation are not governed under labor code unless the government corporation or GOCC, government owned controlled corporation, was incorporated under the corporation code. So we define who is a worker and when is he covered under the labor code <clears throat> because there are exceptions. So the term worker be covered under the labor code generally refers to one who is a regular employee of a person called an employer. So there is a worker who is an employee of the employer. So to determine if there is a, he is covered under the labor code, we should know the relationship between the two. And what's that relationship? If they have employee, employer, or employer, employee relationship. So EE here means employee, ER means employer. So we should know how to run the tests in determining the elements of employee, employer relationship. And these are as follows. Does it have, or does the employer has the power to select? So if the employer did the selection process in hiring the worker, in, select, in selecting or in interviewing, in running the examinations for intrams, I um, mean, entry, then that's correct, that's check, number one. So if the employee is being hired by a contractor and the contractor is the one doing the selection, then there is no employee-employee relationship. Number two is the payment of wages, which is run as a, answers the question, is the employer obligated to pay the worker regularly? If the answer is yes, then there is element number two, there is payment of wages. Of course, not included here are those paid uh, by commissions or as a result of task, like the, like uh, those carpenters, or per piece basis, you know, per piece. Then the third test, which is the most essential element in determining the employee-employer relationship, is the power to control, which means that the employer has the control over the workers, over what, over the means through which the work should be accomplished. You know? Meaning it has supervision, it, it uh, controls the accomplishment or the result of the end product of what the worker is doing. So that is the power to control. So here, if the worker is doing a per piece, per piece, like, uh, let's say example, uh, making of bracelets, no? the handicraft bracelets. If it's in on a per piece basis, so you would fall here and you are not a regular employee. But if you're a, 
piece rate worker, per piece or piece rate worker, and you are being controlled by the uh, by the employer, how are you being controlled? The purpose worker is working in the in the premises of the employer. So the employer is always supervising the purpose worker. So in this case, then there is power to control. So per piece rate or piece rate workers falls under the labor code. If he is under the control of the employer. Okay. And the last test is to determine if the employer has the power to terminate. So if the employer has the right to this to, to discipline the worker and as a means of sanction, so firing or terminating the employment of the worker is exercised, then if this is the case, then there is the, the power to terminate is present as one of the elements of employee-employee relationship. So if all, all these four tests are being answered in the affirmative, then there is employee-employer relationship. And that employee concerned is covered under the labor code.